In this video, I want to look at an alternative approach to finding the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor of a pair of numbers. Previously, when I was trying to find the lowest common multiple of a pair of numbers, I would list the multiples of those numbers to find the lowest common multiple. Similarly, with the highest common factor, I would list the factors of those numbers in order to find the highest common factor. In this alternative approach, we're going to be using the prime factors. I'm going to begin with a pair of numbers that we used in the previous video. That's 36 and 84. In that particular example, we had to find the highest common factor, which happened to be 12. This time, not only are we going to find the highest common factor, we're also going to find the lowest common multiple. So the first stage is to find the prime factors of both 36 and 84. Using this approach for finding the prime factors, we can see that the prime factors for 36 are 2, 2, 3 and 3. And for 84 they are 2, 2, 3 and 7. Notice that I've written the prime factors in long form. I haven't written 36 as 2 squared multiplied by 3 squared. The reason for this is that I want to look at an overlap of prime factors between 36 and 84. And this is the next stage in finding the lowest common multiple and highest common factor. We can see that for 36 and 84, there is an overlap of 2 times 2 times 3. We can visually see this on a Venn diagram. Here we have 36 and 84. Here are the prime factors of 36 and 84. But notice where the overlap is. And those are the three prime factors, 2, 2 and 3. We can now go ahead and find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor. To find the lowest common multiple, we multiply together all the prime factors we can see in the Venn diagram. So the lowest common multiple is 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 7. And that comes to 252. If we look at the multiples of 36 and 84, we can see that this answer is correct, just if you need any convincing. But why does this approach work? Well, simply put, if we're going to try and find the lowest common multiple, we don't want to be repeating multiplications of prime factors. We can see that 2 times 2 times 3 is common to both numbers. If we were to multiply all the prime factors of both numbers, we are effectively just multiplying 36 by 84, which is 3024. And whilst this number is a common multiple, it is not the lowest common multiple. Now to find the highest common factor. Well, the highest common factor is the multiplying together of the overlapping prime factors. So that's these factors here, 2 times 2 times 3. And that, of course, is equal to 12, which is what we found out in the previous video. Let's look at another example. Find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor of 24 and 42. The prime factors of 24 are 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And the prime factors of 42 are 2 times 3 times 7. We can see that we have an overlap of prime factors of 2 multiplied by 3. Here it is on the Venn diagram. So to find the lowest common multiple, we are going to multiply all the prime factors in that Venn diagram. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, which is equal to 168. 
and the highest common factor is the overlap of the prime factors, which is 2 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 6. If we were using the other method for finding the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor, well, here are the multiples of 24 and 42, and we can see that the lowest common multiple is 168. And here are the factors of 24 and 42, and we can see that the highest common factor is 6. I'll do one more example. Find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor of 14 and 36. The prime factors of 14 are 2 and 7, and the prime factors of 36 are 2, 2, 3 and 3. We can see that the overlapping prime factor is 2. This is how it would look on a Venn diagram. So the lowest common multiple is 7 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 252. And the highest common factor is 2. If we were using the other method, well, here are the multiples of 14 and 36. And we can see that the lowest common multiple is 252. Look at how many multiples we had to generate for 14 in order to find the lowest common multiple of 252. In this example, it's clearly beneficial to find the lowest common multiple by finding the prime factors. And here are the factors of 14 and 36, and we can see that the highest common factor is 2. That's an alternative for finding the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. It doesn't matter which approach you use. The approach I used in the previous video is a lot clearer in identifying the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. But the problem with this approach is that it can lead to generating many multiples, as shown in this example here. The approach covered in this video using the prime factors is a really neat way of finding the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. The danger with this approach is not identifying correctly all the overlapping prime factors. If you make a mistake here, then you will make a mistake in finding the correct answers. And because you haven't listed out all the multiples and all the factors, it's not as clear as to whether you've got the correct answer or not. I much prefer the Venn diagram approach, but whichever approach you prefer using, the key thing is to understand what we mean by lowest common multiple and highest common factor. I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.